Hey all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are going to be doing some more AP Physics 1, some rotation free response questions. As usual, uh, I suggest you pause the video, try to solve the problem on your own, and then come back to the video after you've attempted the problem. Okay, so here we go. We have a uniform disc is mounted to an axle and free to rotate without friction. A thin uniform rod is rigidly attached to the disc so that it will rotate with... Okay. A thin uniform rod is rigidly attached to the disc so it will rotate with the disc. A block is attached to the end of the rod. Properties of the disc and the rod are as following, follows. Um, this is the uh, moment of inertia. Uh, when they say moment of inertia, that is um, another word for rotational inertia. That's just moment of inertia is another word for it or another phrasing for it. Um, so the rod has a rotational inertia around its end is this. So they basically give you the rotational inertia of everything. And the block is a mass of 2m. The system is held in equilibrium with the rod and angle theta naught with respect to vertical is shown above by a horizontal string of negligible mass. With one end attached to the disc and the other to the wall, express your answers in the following terms. m, r, theta naught, and g. Determine the tension in the string. Okay, so let's draw our, the, the string is the free body diagram. So um, I got a force here tension. Now in this one, I probably only want to deal with the torques. There is technically gravity and a normal force right here at the center, but those aren't going to cause this thing to rotate at all. So um, I'm more interested in other objects that are going to cause it to rotate. So in this whole system, I have, let's see, I have this block. Um, with mass 2m, so 2mg, force of gravity acting here. I have, um, when I have a uniform rod right at the center of the rod, here I, is the force of gravity on it. It has a mass of 1, that's mg. See, because these things are going to cause a torque from this point of rotation here. See, that's why I include those forces, but I don't include the normal force and the the gravity of the disc because those aren't going to cause it to rotate but these forces will see these are going to cause a torque uh, because they're acting at a distance away from from here um what else let's see any other forces no nope, those are all the forces okay so right now um it's held in equilibrium equilibrium is another word of saying that it's not rotating it's not accelerating or it's, there's no angular acceleration um, basically nothing is moving it's held held there with no motion so for a we have to calculate what the net torque is now each of these forces is causing one to rotate so like we're gonna say uh, counterclockwise is positive direction so these are exerting a positive torque because they're tending to to force everything to rotate counterclockwise whereas the tension is a negative torque because it is causing, it's holding it and, and kind of pulling it to the right, which means it's causing it to um, rotate uh, clockwise. Okay. So the positive torque is 2mg. That's the, well, let, let's calculate what the torques are. I need to, to calculate the torque, I have to look at the vector, the r vector, that is the distance, the vector from the point of rotation to where the, the force is being applied. Okay, that's the vector. Now, you see, the thing is about these force vectors, this torque is not, um, it's not in, um, what do I say? It's not perpendicular to this vector. So what I need to do is I need to break down the vector that, uh, and I'm going to do the R vector because I think it's simpler. The red vector, the R vector for this force, can be broken down to these two component forces. And it's really only this component force that is going, this, sorry, it's not a force, this is the R vector. This component of the R vector that's perpendicular to 2mg. So when I do uh, the torque to do this guy, it's 2mg times this length here, which would be this length 2r times uh, sine theta naught. Like that. Okay, because I'm multiplying the direction vector, the r vector, that's perpendicular to the force vector. 
And I have to do the same thing here, um, but it's at the same angle. So this is plus mg times r sine theta naught. Again, the r sine theta naught is the component of the vector that of this direction vector that is um, perpendicular to the force vector. Like this, this vector part doesn't matter. It's only the part that's perpendicular to the force vector that causes a torque. Okay. So those are the positive torques. Then I subtract a negative torque. Well, uh, this tension is doing a negative torque and it's applying it r distance away. And you see this r vector is already perpendicular to t. So I just do t times uh, r. And the net torque has to be zero because um, we're in equilibrium. There's no net acceleration here. So I can divide everything by r. If you see that, I can divide everything out by, so I can, the r's kind of cancel out. And so I get, this is 4mg sine theta naught plus mg. So that's 5mg sine theta naught. And then moves the t to the other side equals t. So the t is 5mg sine theta naught. Okay. The string is now cut and the disc rod block system is free to rotate. They're determining the fault. So once I cut this string, now it's gonna everything's gonna swing down this way. Determine the falling for the instant immediately after the string is cut. The magnitude of the angular acceleration of the disc. Immediately after the string is cut, the net torque is just all of this except this, right? Because now I've, I've cut the tension. So the only these are the only two causing torques. That's equal to five mg sine theta naught, and that's equal to I alpha. Now, the rot moment of inertia, the rotational inertia, the way you handle it is you have to, because you look at everything that's going to rotate and add all the rotational inertias together. So the rotational inertia of the disk to rotate is 1.5 mR squared, plus the rotational inertia of the rod is 4 thirds Oops. M R squared. And you actually have to add the rotational inertia of this block, which is um, 2 M 2 R squared. I'm not going to focus too much on how to calculate this. Like I said, for AP Physics 1, I don't think you are required to calculate it. But in general, for a point mass, I is equal to mr squared. And this is this mass was 2m, and its distance was 2r. So m2r squared times alpha. So this is, one point, this is 3 halves plus 4 thirds plus 8. So 8 plus 4 thirds, let's say that's 24 over 3, 28 over 3, 28 over 3 plus 3 halves. Do add a 6, 56 plus 9 is 65 over 6. So 65 over 6 mr squared alpha. And that's equal to that. The m's will cancel on both sides here, and I can solve for alpha. I'm going to div uh, multiply by, s so I'm going to do 5g sine theta times 6 divided by 65 divided by r squared. So this 5 cancels becomes 13. That becomes, this is alpha, and that's equal to 6 thirteenths g sine theta, theta naught over r squared. Okay. So that's the instantaneous acceleration right when I cut this the string. The magnitude of the linear acceleration of the mass at the end of the block. Um so this was one. The linear acceleration is alpha is a is equal to alpha r that's equal to um, 6 thirteenths g sine theta, theta naught. And then the, the multiplying this by r is just going to get rid of one of those r's. So I'll just get like that. So that's acceleration, linear acceleration. 
So as the disc rotates, the rod passes the horizontal position as shown above. Determine the linear speed of the mass at the end of the rod for the instant the rod is in the horizontal position. Okay. This is a little bit of a tricky one. The thing is, is this acceleration changes because the torque actually changes as this thing rotates. That makes sense. Because this angle changes, and so the, the vector that's perpendicular to the force vector is going to change as it rotates. And so it's not a constant acceleration. So there's no kinematic way to calculate from the acceleration, or not an easy way to do it, not without calculus. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to do conservation of energy. We're going to say what the poten what the energy was up here versus the energy down here of this system. Now, the energy that everything has is you want to think of it as like the whole system is not moving in a sense. So we only have um, kinetic energy. Yeah. We only we we can think of it as all as a kinetic rotational energy. So right now this system has potential energy, um, say relative to um, the horizontal position. Um, so I'm running out of colors, but I'm gonna say relative to this point, uh, this thing has potential energy. This mass has potential energy here, and this thing has potential energy. And this potential energy is going to get converted into rotational kinetic energy. Because by the time I get to here, it has no potential energy. There's no height above this line. So initially, the potential energy is just mgh. So the potential energy of the rod is mgh. Its mass is m times g. Its height above here, well, if this is r, um, this is r like this distance is r and this is theta so this distance uh is r cosine cosine theta naught and then the potential energy of this block is 2m that's its mass times g times r 2r cosine theta naught because his distance is further is higher up right this is um r cosine theta 2r cosine theta naught because this is 2r away Okay, and so that gives me a total of, uh, this is 2, 4, 5, 5 m, g, r, cosine theta naught. This is how much potential energy that he has initially. Then it all turns into kinetic rotational energy, which is equal to 1 half i omega squared. Well, we, we calculated what i of this system was. i was the sum of these systems, which was 65 over 6 m r squared and then times omega squared now I can set these equal to each other and solve for omega but what I'm actually looking for is the linear speed so v is equal to um, linear speed at of the mass at the end of the rod it's equal to r omega R in this case is he wants the linear speed at this guy at the end. His distance is 2R omega. So omega is equal to V over 2R, which I can then plug into here and then solve for V. So I get this is equal to 1 half 65 over 6 MR squared times V squared over 4R squared. Right, because I just square this. Okay, so 6 to 24, 48, that's equal to 65 over 48. The R squares actually cancel here. Um, M V squared. Okay, so that's the kinetic energy that it will have. And that's equal, again, to all of this potential energy. So then if I solve, the M's cancel, if I solve for V, I multiply by this, so v squared is equal to 48 over 65 times 5 g r cosine theta naught. That's 1, that becomes 13, it's equal to 48 over 13 g r cosine theta naught. And so v is equal to the square root of all of this.
and that is the linear speed. Okay, that was a pretty algebraically and a pretty pretty tricky tricky problem, but hopefully you guys found that helpful. And I will see you all in the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content. And see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.